Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 75 of Tales of Tamriel, a Dungeon Crawler Network production. I am your host, Ajelos, and with me this afternoon, we only got one other host, because this was kind of a pushback episode. Uh, Avi. Avi Optimal, how are you today, sir? Oh, I'm doing good. A little a little tired from all the PTS playing, but I'm doing good. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, we wanted to do another little episode because unfortunately on Sunday, uh, I was not feeling all that well. Uh, I wasn't really sick or anything. I was just exhausted. The little milk drinker kept us up and I was just, I just needed a rest. So I didn't feel like I could have produced a good enough show with being so tired. So we pushed it back to today. And uh, unfortunately, Esteldin was not able to make it because of the time. Uh, him being, you know, over there in Britain and whatnot, different time zones. He has to go to bed, so we'll miss him. Uh, but we wanted to get a little something out for everybody. And uh, this episode really is going to be a fan appreciation show. There's not a lot of news, a few little things to talk about. But uh, I, I really wanted to say from like the bottom of my heart how much I just love the community and our fans. You guys are the absolute best group of people that I know. And regardless of my personal feelings about where Elder Scrolls Online is headed, um, I know I'm very outspoken against the cash shop and things of that nature. But I, I just adore this community so much that... I honestly can't foresee leaving, period, just because of how much I love the community. So um, I guess before we get super started and before I turn the show too sappy, uh, I got to mention our sponsors. And this episode has been brought to you by awesome Patreon supporters like Kilted Piper and Kipster, who are our newest Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, guys, um, for supporting us. I mean, you guys have been... Some of our, our oldest fans, not necessarily saying that you're old. I don't know. Maybe you're older than me, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they've, they've definitely been listening. Like Kilted Piper and, and Kipster have been listening as far back as I can remember. Like They've been around for the longest time. So thank you so much, guys. We really do appreciate it. And uh, we actually hit one of our Patreon goals, which was we will be upgrading our server storage uh, to a new updated storage coming soon. So uh, I'm going to start working on that. It'll allow us to just get a little bit more uh, bandwidth, uh, less slowdown because we've been getting a lot of viewers and stuff like that, and, and a little bit more back-end stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Um, obviously, commissioning some more artwork for the site. Um, I've been I've been you know dishing that money out of my own pocket for now for a bunch of different stuff that the network does, but uh, that will definitely help as well. Um, for those of you who uh, are currently not supporting Dungeon Crawler Network but wish to help us out, uh, you can consider donating or becoming a patron of ours on our, our Patreon page. You can find the link to both the direct donation and to our Patreon on our website, DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com. If you're unable to support us financially but still wish to support us, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, leaving us a review on iTunes, and telling a friend about us. All of that helps us out so much. Now, uh, Avi, I know uh, you and I were talking about this a little bit. Speaking of those who leaving us a review on iTunes, last episode I made a, a challenge out to everyone about helping us get more iTunes reviews. And I honestly did not think we'd have quite as many as we did. That's why I, I love you guys so much. Um, we went from just under, I think, 45 reviews up to 61. So you guys are absolutely amazing. I'm actually going to read them off here. Um, but we're going to kind of mix up the show a little bit. But I, I do have to say thank you so much for everyone who stepped up and was like, hey, we're going to help them out. You guys are fantastic. Avi, did you get a chance to see all those reviews? Yeah, all these all these great emails, too. Yeah. Go go play The Legends of Zelda. Well, you'll, you'll hear about that in a little bit. Don't yeah, worry. yeah. <laughs> um, we're we're going we're gonna to talk about that. Um, I'm going to read off some of these reviews because these are great. Uh, our first one is a family-oriented gaming podcast, five stars by Dark Lord Jesus Breath. 
But I actually know who that is. That's Overlord. Thank you so much. Uh, Overlord, actually, when we made this, he was watching live and said he went off and did it right away. And this this is his, I believe. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, man. You jumped on, jumped on it right away as soon as I said it. Uh, but he goes, this podcast features Jealous and his wife, Thais, who just had a newborn and are still heavily involved in the Elder Scrolls community. I was on episode 14 as a guest, and ever since, I've been addicted to listening to the viewpoints of Ag Thais and the ever-sensual Krabby. Ooh. Ooh. Uh-huh. Se- ever-sensual Krabby. I like it. For 73 episodes of integrity, decency, and above all else, passion for the Elder Scrolls. Always greatly excited. 9.9 out of 10 for sound quality and just decent people. They're not, in all caps, going to hijack the podcast to rant about political or social beliefs. It is that kind of integrity that is necessary for an A-plus level entertainer. In conclusion, if you enjoy strong content and polite opinion on the state of the Elder Scrolls, and more specifically the Elder Scrolls Online, this podcast is for you. Thank you so much, Overlord. I really do appreciate that. And um, I'm glad that the sound quality is pretty good. And I'm going to actually talk to someone else who has a sound quality thing. But thank you so much. Um, and you know, for everything you, you, you've been doing, I know you've been following us for a very, very long time. Even when you don't play ESO, you've still been following us. And that's that's really great. Uh, I'm glad to see that you've been back in ESO. And um, yeah, just great. And I, I, I know, Avi, this is something we were talking about prior to the show about trying to keep everything on about the show, not so much about anything else or spiraling off into anything real worldy, if you will. Yeah, this is an Elder Scrolls show. Let's keep it Elder Scrolls. There you go. There we yep. go. Uh, next up is Many Thanks, five stars from D Prescott 01 Trying to help you reach 74 reviews. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being my favorite source of entertainment for my commute to and from Boston every day. My character's name is Guacamole. Hello. Feel free to reach out to me and say hello uh, if we ever happen to bump into each other in ESL. Um, Thank you for that that review, man. We really appreciate it. And uh, feel free to send us a a friend request. I'm uh, at Agelos. That's A-G-G-E-L-O-S. And Avi is something else. I'm at I'm at Avi Optimal, A-V-I-O-P-T-I-M-A-L. Nice. Uh, and of course, if you play on EU, it's at Esteldian and uh, at Tear Eater for Thais. So. Uh, this next review is something interesting. Number 74, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, five stars from Raider mm-hmm. for Life 530. I am a listener and do us all a favor and play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time before you knock it. Your lady loves this game for a reason. Sorry, man, but it's bugging me. Listening to QuakeCon 2015 episode 74, thanks for the good show, and I'll re- review it again after I listen. Um, thank you so much for the five star man. And actually, since you said this, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna call out right here. If we get 100 likes on this YouTube video, I know it's up there, but it's gonna be there because I think we can do it. If we get 100 likes on this video. I will record myself playing the Ocarina of Time. Legend. You of heard Zelda. it here and now, people. I will you figure out a now. way of streaming my gameplay and all of that and playing Ocarina of Time if I get 100 likes on this YouTube video. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah. You may even hear Thais yelling at me for doing something wrong. So that that's that's my challenge to you guys you guys already stepped up and really really did something here so if we get a hundred likes on this that's that's a that's a big step because there it is but if we get a hundred on this video i will record myself playing ocarina of time you're gonna love it man i'll tell i'll tell you right now i know we were just talking about not getting sidetracked from elder scrolls but you will love that game well, they, they're saying I should play it, so I will definitely play it if we get that. If we if we get the interest and all the likes on this, I will definitely play play that game. So, um, I played a little bit of Wind Waker. That was about it. Uh, oh no, 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 no! <sighs> don't don't go saying that. Don't go saying that to Zelda fans. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, my wife. Ace is a huge Zelda fan. That's actually her favorite. Wind Waker? Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine's, Major- mine's Majora's Mask. So She really does like Majora's Mask, and she actually said I would like it too because I like darker fantasy. 
oh, which is yeah. why it, I like Elder Scrolls so much because it's it's more mature and dark. Um, which is probably why I stayed away from Legend of Zelda. But <laughs> Ocarina of Time gets gets pretty dark at points. It's uh, Zelda does it good. Zelda does it good. I'll leave it at that. Zelda okay. does it good. All right. Am I gonna feel like? Every time I see this, though, the only thing I can think of is that one meme about uh, Navi. Navi is it Navi, the little fairy yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, hey, help, help listen, me. listen, yeah. look, and then Link pulls out a shotgun and shoots him. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna game, get to the that game by is the over. Because <laughs> oh, I th- I played Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time for all of about five minutes, like the, one of the first times I met my wife. Uh, I stayed over at her place, and she had that, and I'm like, well, I'll try it. And I threw it in, and only about five minutes into it, I just wanted to rip the little wings off of Navi. So, <laughs> that's Hey, it. listen. Hey, <laughs> listen. Look. <sighs> all right, 100 likes. I will play all the way through Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and record it. <laughs> there you go. Challenge up. All right, must listen to must listen for Elder Scrolls fans. Five stars from Steve O thirty three. Just recently started playing ESO since it launched on console, and I was looking for an Elder Scrolls podcast to listen to while at work. I love the podcast, and the host are all great. It's informative and entertaining, and I love the fact that the host Agelos and his wife Thais play ESO together, just as my wife and I have since Skyrim. This podcast has all the lore, the upcoming news for ESO, and is family-friendly listen. Keep up the great work, Tales of Tamriel. Thank you so much, man. We really do appreciate that. Um, what's really funny is I think the first uh, Elder Scrolls game I played with my wife was Skyrim. When it came out, I saw it. We were walking through Walmart, and I think we were playing World of Warcraft at the time, but we were kind of in a wall, and I saw it, and I love the Elder Scrolls series, so I said, hey, how about we each buy a copy and, you know, we can't really play together, but we can play next to each other and kind of go towards the same areas. And we actually did that with e- our Skyrim sat, put our computers right next to each other. We, we bought like the Prima strategy guide sat there and we just kept going straight through it. <laughs> Barely, I don't think we even opened the book, but it was fun. Albeit my wife always had issues because she always made the stealthy characters. And I obviously made the big Nord with the big sword running in there, come and come at me, bro. So I was always done with dungeons like 20 minutes before she was because she's sneaking through <laughs> it. I just walk in with my big sword and like, come at me. And, and I just kill everybody. That's how I played. So, <laughs> um, wow. So many reviews. Uh, as always, love the show. Five stars from Dues and Tamriel. Yay. This is one of my favorite podcasts, let alone my favorite Elder Scrolls related podcast. Great job and keep up the good work. Um, thank you so much, guys. And if you don't know, uh, Dudes and Tamriel, they're an awesome like in-game kind of a gameplay podcast. They go over the news and stuff of that. But it's a lot. Of, they stream the gameplay, talk about what they're doing in game. It's a really good show if, if, if you're into that, uh, just listening to a bunch of people play the game. Like, it's really good. You should check them out. Scary uh, Drew and Scary Do, those guys are great, and they should definitely uh, definitely listen to their show as well. I do every week, so yep. uh, I, I really do like their show. So definitely give them a listen, Do's and Tamriel. I think they have a new website, doesandtamriel.com, if I remember correctly. Um, check them out. Really, really, really fun group of people. Uh, love them. And uh, there are actually a couple, too, that play the game. So if, if you like listening to couples play, that's great. Uh, Avi, I'm going to need your help pronouncing this the name of the next one. <laughs> I can't. A- Anthesimal. And, uh, Is he a Dwemer? And th- uh, Dwemer? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it my, feels like that, I, I've, never, I've, never, I've never really met a Dwemer, so... I'm I'm not too sure on what their names are. (laughs) (laughs) Great podcast. Five stars from Anthesimal or something. I'm sorry, dude, but this is like pronouncing a Dwemer ruin. It's, you know, you just go that place. So anyway, great, great way to pass the time at work and vicariously play some ESO. Thank you for the five star view, man. Um, Next one is outstanding. Five stars from STUMC26. Stumic. Stumic. That's what I'm going to pronounce it. Great podcast. Give it a listen. Get on ESO and join the Wings of Fate Guild in Tamriel. All right. I like this. Jealous is a fantastic host and provides tons of useful or at least very entertaining information. 
that's fair. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree yeah. with that. Estelian, Avi, and Thais, when she's not busy with Ag's little milk drinker, provide loads of entertainment and is definitely worth your time and your attention. And the most precious thing you have. Keep up the great work. <clears throat> mm. I wow. guess we need a drink. Thank you so much, man. And I, I do love his... Uh, I provide tons of useful, or at very least, interesting. Uh, th- th- does seem, that seems very fitting. Very, very fitting. Yeah, I like the, I like his words, his wording. His wording is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, next up, a fantastic Elder Scrolls podcast, five stars from Evan Wins. Evan Wins, yay! Hey. We all know awesome. Evan Wins on Twitter. Uh, this is a great resource for those wanting to keep up to date with the most recent Elder Scrolls information. I especially enjoy their companion website, which is a wealth of guides and resources. However, and I, I accept this one. As you also use some kind of noise reduction during post-process, I can hear his fan or room ambiance in the background. A minor concern from an audiophile. For the queen. I should now strike that. I'm not even going to say for the queen. That's bad. Way, way to trick me into saying that. Um, Eben wins. Thank you so much. And I know I have my air conditioner on. It is so hot here. <laughs> I know it sacrifices audio quality, but it, one of the things that it's really hard to do, and I'll, I'll say this with some post-processing, is ideally the best way for me to record this show would be to have each one of my hosts record their side using something like Audacity or something and then mixing it all together. Um, I don't do that. I probably should but i don't like to put a lot of extra work on my my host so i do all of it and i record all of it through one program however that makes it very difficult to adjust any type of of um, noise reduction because i am very loud and my noise is and if i do anything it kind of affects all the tracks um hopefully when winter comes and i no longer need to have my air conditioner on that noise will be gone and uh, I know Eben wins. He's uh, he's definitely an audiophile. I know he's a musician. So this is kind of his forte. And I'm an amateur at this compared to him. I'm very sure. So, um, yeah, I, I apologize for that. But it's one of those things with my air conditioner on for these months. It's either that or I pass out from heat stroke. So uh, I apologize if people can hear that noise in the background. And uh, I will do my best to remove it in the future. Maybe even just moving my my recording session a little further away. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the five star review. Anyway, man, I will definitely look at that and, uh, go from there. Um, yeah, I like Evan wins. He's awesome. Yeah, always, yeah. He's always on Twitter. I like looking at his stuff. Yep. Yeah. A good uh, part of the community. Yeah. His, his, uh, cute little boss Bosmer. Yeah. It's the Bosmer. Bosmer. Yeah. yeah creamy. Yep. Creamy Night Vale, I think is the name. I'm sorry if I got the last name wrong. I know it's Creamy something. I think it's Night Vale. I could be wrong, so please don't scold me. <laughs> <laughs> do not do not lower my our review based on the fact that I can't remember the character's last name. Four stars next time. Four stars <laughs> for not remembering my character's name. <sighs> That's fair. I, I agree. Um, great podcast, five stars from Sobo73. Really enjoy the podcast, listening to every episode. Thank you so much, man. We really do appreciate that. Um, hopefully you see our progression as we go along, always trying to improve. Hopefully we get better as time goes on. We have some ideas going forward of things that I'm not quite ready to talk about. I was hoping to have them done by this week, but, uh, week got away from me, so you'll have to wait. So, um, last five star review that came in just today or yesterday, but I only saw it today. Awesome podcast and network five stars by driven by panic. Ooh, I like that name. <laughs> Driven yeah, by cool Panic. name. Yeah. Uh, this is by far my favorite ESO podcast. Oh, man, thank you. Um, great in-game community with the Wings of Fate Guild, along with great info on all the games we love. Um, also, check out Dungeon Crawl Network if you're looking for more. Wow. That's an awesome review, man. I really do appreciate that. Um, obviously... This is an Elder Scrolls podcast. We talk Tales is our Elder Scrolls, but we do do a lot of d- different stuff on Dungeon Crawlers. So if you're at all interested in RPGs of any kind, because that's kind of what we follow, RPGs, um, we have the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast, which is a once a month podcast where we uh, talk about current gaming news, things that are going on in the network. So you guys can all be up to par with what we're doing over here. 
Uh, we just started uh, Chocobo Nights, which is a Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy 14 podcast that just did their first official episode uh, on Saturday. Um, so there's that. We also have a lot of guides and stuff for ESO and a bunch of other things out there. So definitely, definitely check us out. And we really do appreciate it. Uh, I also want to give a special thanks to all the people who wrote five star reviews, but they didn't actually write anything. Um, that works as well. I mean, we see the five stars. I noticed the number kept going up, even though there was no written review. Uh, but I do really appreciate those of you who did give us five stars, even without writing anything. Thank you so much. You guys, honestly, when I said about the review thing, it was sort of a joke, sort of like I, I expected maybe one or two people to follow through, but not as many as what did. So we really appreciate it, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Those iTunes reviews help us out so much. Whew. Man, I've been talking a lot, Avi. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, it, was good to, it was good to do. Our community is great. They are. They are honestly one of the best communities out there. And I, I love these guys. They are fantastic. All right. Let's go ahead and let's move right into some game news. There wasn't a whole lot, but there was a little bit this week. Um, first off, I'll mention it, even though it barely warrants a mention. There was a patch today. Patch 2.0.15 hit the PC side. It was a small incremental patch that addressed some issues with Cadwell's silver and gold, as well as, was that that Thrizrani arena? Yeah, Thrizrani. Yeah. Um, there's really only two things. One is the main quest, Cadwell's silver and gold. You'll no longer become blocked from completing these quests if you jump to a friend or otherwise teleport to the silver gold zones before you actually interact with the light of Meridia. Um, I didn't know that even worked. Like I didn't know that. I didn't know that was possible. I didn't. I've I've tried before to port, and it never let me. Like it's like nope, you can't go there yet. Even though I knew like it was you know I can't port to the gold zones yet because I've not finished all of silver. I have tried, but that's strange. I didn't know it was it was doing that. Maybe it works now. Yeah. Um, and in the Thizrani arena, arena spectators can no longer be attacked. I didn't know if that was a thing. I think it's mostly just because people are getting in these arena battles and attacking an NPC then getting a bounty. Oh. Is that what this is? It possibly. I, I didn't know there was an issue with it. So I- well, I know I know there's been some issues with a lot of certain places in the in the Elder Scroll in their Elder Scrolls world where they have like those certain like you go up to a person and it's like challenge me to a fight and he's like, All right, I'll fight you but he has like three NPCs standing around him all glowing white at the same time. So it's mm. like uh, I'll try this, but I think I'm gonna get a bounty. Single target only. Single target only. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, all right. Um that makes sense. Uh, next up is the Elder Scrolls Online released an Imperial City Telvar Stone Guide. This is on the official Elder Scrolls Online page. It, it's a nice little starter. I like that they've been starting to do this on the guy on the on the main website. Just quick little things to tell you what Telvones Telvar stones are. Tells you about the system, how all it works with the multiplier, et cetera, et cetera. Um, such as. They talk about the multiplier that when you carry more than 100 Telvar stones, but less than 1,000, you get a 2x multiplier. Uh, After 1,000 to 10,000, it's a 3x multiplier. Anything more than 10,000 is a 4x multiplier. So that's a lot of stones. A lot of of stones. Um, It goes through talking about death and everything like that, um, what to expect and, and what you can buy. It's a really nice guide. So um, did you see it, Avi? Yeah, I saw it. And uh, since I've been playing with the Telvar stones all week, I'm really happy they put this up because it's, it's, it can be a little confusing at first, the whole 2x, the multiplier. But uh, yeah, I'm happy they put this up and I'm happy the Telvar stones are now in the game. God, I love them. <laughs> nice. I love them. Well, we'll, well, when we hit gameplay, you can talk about yes, those. I will. I'm holding it back. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> um, but while we're talking about Telvar Stones, they have released a PTS Telvar Stone competition. And I'm going to read this. Uh, it was first announced on um, the ESO Live. 
Um, but then I guess they posted on the forums as well. Starting today, that's the day of this recording, so you'll be hearing this a day after it starts. But August 3rd, um, they invite us to participate in the Telvar Stone competition on the PTS. Your task is to is collect as many Telvar stones in the Imperial City as you can, and those that collect the most will win a prize. We will be determining the winner based on the following criteria. Telvar stones in your inventory at the end of the contest period. Telvos, Telvar stones in the bank at the end of the contest period. And total Telvar stones spent during the period. Now... The dates, they'll have two separate contests so everyone gets a chance uh, to use their copy characters. Um, first one is today, the third at 10 a.m. through Sunday, August 9th, so it's a week. Uh, the next one is the August 17th through August 23rd. Again, one more week uh, to do this competition. Now, they're going to have 20 winners. There's going to be 10 for each period. Uh, and the, Now, this is pretty cool. The winner's the people who win will be awarded the following items. The top player for each contest period, so there will be two of them, one for the one that starts the third and one for the 17th, they will receive 3,000 crowns to spend in the crown store, as well as one of the mind-shriven horse mounts available when the Imperial City DLC pack is published. The nine runners-up for each contest period, um, for each one, will receive 750 crowns to spend in the crown store. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Now Avi, I know you were talking about this. It's I'm excited for it. It's interesting. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh well it just seems like one of those things where like for me personally, I know I'm not gonna win. But right. the idea of getting involved with it and doing the whole Telvar run and see how much I can get by the time before time runs out. I like that. And I like that they're they're adding these these kind of things into the game. These these out of game things being put into the game where you could win rewards for them, I th I like that. Okay, um, it, it, I like these contests as well, but it's one of those that if you don't have off all week, it's gonna be very hard. To oh win. yeah, yeah. Or anyone with a job, it's gonna be very hard to win these. So because it's not like a weekend thing or anything of that nature, it, it's a week long. So if you're not somebody who this is all you do the chances of you winning are very low. Yeah. Just because it's not going to be possible. Like, it's just not. Um, unless that person gets ganked every three seconds. But who knows? <laughs> All right. Our final little bit of news is they found some more data mined items with the most recent patch. Now, I am going to mention that some of this stuff is I'm only going to mention a couple things. I'm not going to mention everything because a lot of it, some of the things that they mentioned are things that I don't know. Like, I feel like, uh, what, well, let me, let me rephrase this. One of the things that they found that was for some odd reason re data mined was maybe the fact they'll go into the crown store. It's like some of the pets that you get from, doing quests like the uh the the dwemer spider from razix wheel are the the skeleton competition type thing from um uh it's from a quest in epic yeah Artifact, right? it's yeah it's shadow fen the skeleton one i'm not gonna spoil it but i i i don't know i feel like this is where you have to take this stuff into account because these things are already available in game why would they put them in the crown store unless they were planning on removing it from the quest which i can't imagine them doing but i don't know i i really hope we don't see uh awards get put into the crown store especially things like like the monkey we got for testing you know or stuff like that like i know they were showing a like a black monkey, you know, a darker right. skinned monkey. Those kind of things, I don't have a problem with. But when it comes to the in-game rewards, we only we only have so few of them right now. Don't take them away from us. Right. I agree. And some of my, some of these things, and the reason why I say this is because there's two things on this crown store or on the list called the Vampire Secret and the Werewolf Secret. I'm going to tell you right now, those were things that were put on the PTS to help people level Werewolf to test it our vampire to test it. You, you learn the book and you were a full 10 werewolf or vampire. If you had to create a template character, will that ever make it to live? I doubt it. You know, I really feel like that was something that 
um, was put in just for the PTS. I don't think it's going to be something we see live. I, I hope really not. Um, but some things is they're releasing a bunch of different uh, um, costumes, such as Imperial Battle Mage Pack, the Imperial Officer, which I am in love with because I think that the Imperial armor looks the best in the game. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I got a question for you, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have uh, bag updates and bank upgrades shown in here, too. Mm-hmm. How do you mm-hmm. feel about that? You know, this this is how I feel about that. I feel about the same as I do about the horse thing. If okay. they price it the same way they price the horse, I don't, you know... Is it worthwhile buying bank space rather than just using in-game gold? Maybe near the very, very end because it gets very expensive to upgrade your bank at the end. Maybe it's worth the 10 bucks or whatever it would be. I don't know. It would depend what the pricing is. You, you know I'm not fond of these things in the first place. I'm not fond of, like, people should work for stuff, not just throw down their credit card. That's what I always feel. Um, but as long as they're priced expensive enough to make it that people go well this is not easier than just doing it in game I don't know I I really don't this one I'm probably a little bit less so than the horse because the horse was something that you did one quest a day you had enough to buy a food for your horse right like it wasn't hard to do the bag space and the bank space get pretty difficult near the end I don't, know. I don't know. This this whole thing is just I don't I don't like the idea of everything you can do in game you're able to do out of game too. It right. it, it, just, it it discourages me. It kind of reminds me of my Skyrim days where I wanted to buy a horse in the beginning. I didn't have enough gold, so I would just go to the console commands and type in add right. gold f fifth a thousand and buy myself a horse. Right. And it's like well. You're not you're not playing the game. You lose ah. something when you do that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's this is one of the main reasons why I I I quit Rift was when it went free to play. Um, and the reason why was because they didn't remove things from the game, but they added them all to the to their their whatever their cash shop. And I know I was talking with uh, Esteldian and. Both of, uh, both of us were in agreement that if the game was still a sub game, we would likely still be playing it. Like, we might even be doing a podcast on it, kind of thing, because we both very much enjoyed Rift. But when it went free to play, it ruined it for us, not because it was accessible, but because they removed all reason to do anything in game. The thing that killed me the most, I was rating the one dwarven, I can't remember the, the thing right now, what rate it was. But there was a, a rare mount that dropped off the final boss. Okay? Very rare. I log in after the free to play. It's available on the cash shop. You oh just, my goodness. So it's like, oh, it's still available in game. It's like a 1% drop chance or something like that. Or if you get sick and tired of waiting for it to drop, you can just throw down 50 bucks. It's like. And that, and that is where these bag upgrades make me a little nervous. Because it starts with bag upgrades. And it starts with bank upgrades and horse upgrades. But where's it going to end? And that, that mm-hmm. makes me a little nervous. I mean, I know people have said this a lot and it's nothing new. But if I saw them put armor into the, into the cash shop, I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, no, that's, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> you that's know? very like, much a pay to win system. And that's yeah. something that games like. Uh, uh, if you if you followed some of the Tryon games like Arc Age, like in concept I, the I, game I, I, sounded I, I, awesome, but when you got into the crash shop, they had such shady stuff. Like they added things in game, like uh, there was a magic upgrade system um, where you could upgrade it, you know, in the game, but the chances that you would get it, like you could lose the item, like and it would be there were just so it was so risky to upgrade. Or you could buy stuff in the cash shop to make it like a hundred percent, or you could buy chests with magical items. In. Like that was something where it's like, wow, it's not even worth us doing it in game because they made it so nearly impossible to do it in game that it's just easier to throw down our credit card. God, I I hate. I, I hope I never see that in this game. Yeah, me too. And this is one of the reasons why I am so against the crown store. Like I really am. I don't like it. Yeah, because it starts off peaceful, but where's it going to end up in the long run? Right. Well, that's the same thing that happened with the motifs. 
Yep. Like at first it was costumes. Okay, that's great. It's all vanity. And I, I guess you could say the motifs are something that was vanity too. I, I do agree. It's vanity. But the thing was, it was still an accomplishment to get them all in the game. You know, like you farm them, you bought them, you did whatever you could to get them. It was something to work towards and they completely removed it by going, well, here, you, if you don't want to, if you don't want to risk or, or not risk, but there was no risk. But if you don't, if you don't feel like if you're too lazy to go out and farm them or to farm money to buy them from other players, just throw down your credit card. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's those things like that that I'm not very excited about and why I never will be a fan of cash shops in game. I'm not and I never will be. So um, there's a lot of new costumes in here that we talked about. Um, uh, the mind shriven horse, the soul shriven set, as well as fighters, assassins uh, or Akaviri, I should say. It looks like they're, we're going to get the Yukudin and Akaviri motifs. They're showing us the ones in the crown store now, but I'm sure they'll be available in game as well. Handful of pets. Um, they have the Breton, Elven, and Nord hero armor, which is the stuff from the Blur trailer. I'm sure of it. Uh, Zivkin mercenary styles. They have uh, a bunch of different styles um, coming out. A baby Netch. That's kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to provide the link to this uh, Google Doc that I have in the notes in the show. So you can so you can look out here about all the stuff that because there is a huge list of things um, that were data mined. So, I mean, check them out. There are some pretty neat stuff. Skeletal horse, skeletal senshi, skeletal guar. Um, that's kind of creepy, but those are things that they found. So. <laughs> I'll link it so you guys can see. There's a lot of stuff that have been data mined. So we may see in the crown store. I'm hoping we see. Honestly, I'd feel better if about half of this was available in game and the rest was crown store. They need to add oh. more stuff into the game that people can try to get that they can't just throw down a credit card. Otherwise, yep, this game is just how much can how, how big is my, you know, do I have to call my bank and go, hey, I need a credit card limit or else I can't get all the stuff in ESO. It, that's that's what I kind of feel like, so I don't know. I'm not just dis I'm disappointed, but you know, uh, it is what it is. I'll leave it at that. Um, I will say one other thing, and it, it's kind of interesting. Under collectibles, and I'm I'm doing a call out here to uh, uh, Wicked Wolf, Mister. There's something in here called Wolf Wolf Undead Wolf Desert Wolf Mountain Wolf Superior. No idea what it is, but it's wolf something. So uh, enjoy. <laughs> I'll let your, <laughs> your mind speculate over that. Um, so there you go, sir. All right. That's all for the game news. We're going to go ahead and move into our discussion topic, which is the ESO Live special Q&A that they had. Instead of a standard um, ESO Live, they brought in uh, Rich Lambert, um, uh, Wheeler, and Eric Robel. I sorry, I cannot remember Wheeler's first name. Why am I not? Is it Brian Brian Wheeler? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they had a, just a quick Q and A. It was like an hour and a half Q and A session about Imperial City, uh, and I highlighted a few things that I thought were really interesting. So we'll go through them right now. And uh, Avi, we'll we'll just do each one and then we'll stop and talk about it. Sound good? Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, shouldn't be too big. Some of them pretty quick. Uh, mm -hmm. First. I'm going to do first three, okay, because they kind of all go together. Uh, the yeah. werewolf passive has been removed unless you have the ultimate slotted. The same goes with vampire, um, that you have to have an ability slotted that is vampire to get all the passives. But they did reduce the penalties for both. I think it went to 30% extra damage instead of 50. Uh, on top of that, werewolf also gets a passive armor and spell defenses when you're, I guess, either have it on, you know, you have to have it slotted. Thoughts, Avi? Uh, I don't know. You know, there's a, in my in my opinion, there's already not enough incentive to play a werewolf. I All of my characters are werewolves. Well, Why? Because of the stamina. Well, that's, that's what they even said on the thing, and I agree with this. They're like, there's no reason not to be. Because you don't but get they're it. Not give, they're not giving enough reason to be one, mm. in my opinion. It's like, why are you gonna, why are you gonna turn yourself into, were, into a werewolf and, and give up 
having flawless dawnbreaker on your bar you know right. it's like it's like i'm not gonna give up my ultimate just for a stamina for a little stamina buff and for the abilities that are on the werewolf bar in my opinion it's just it's just not worth the Right. The ultimate to me but it's it's bad gameplay though to have werewolf and not actually use it just oh, so oh, for the I, 50% I agree. bonus i agree it's just a simple matter that in for my in my opinion of course mm-hmm. you know it's just yeah. uh, the werewolf is not if you do decide to go play a werewolf it's like well it's not good enough for me my my character can be way stronger without even touching the werewolf thing and that's where the problem is it's not that everybody's getting the werewolves for the stamina regen it's that Beyond that, there's no incentive to use the werewolf anymore. Because even in Skyrim, when you get bit in the companion to become a werewolf, you have the werewolf blood in you. And it, you know, and I'm guessing that'd probably give you buffs outside of being a werewolf. Mm-hmm. So I've always liked this stam- this idea of stamina while you're not in werewolf form. But taking up my ultimate slot, I, I don't like that. Right. Uh, maybe they need to just like incentivize werewolf a little bit more like but here's the thing maybe this is just my role play side but i as a templar i feel like i shouldn't be a werewolf like the oh, way yeah. i play my holy warrior but i'm also an end game raider so i had to take it because it's like it's a free 15 percent. just pretend like you don't have it <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, pretty much. You just pretend that you don't see the the lycanthropy symbol next to your name. You know, just forget it. Um, because I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm an immersion player. I think that's what I always talked about. Where I like, I have to throw my cat off of here because she's going crazy. <laughs> and spray bottle, yay, spray bottle. And she messed up the notes because she stepped on my keyboard. Anyway, <laughs> um, I don't know, just. <laughs> I hated the fact that I had to be a werewolf just for the passive when I wasn't going to use it. And I hated the fact that people who weren't using it were getting a passive because I feel like it should be something special. Um, I, I I would like to see a damage increase, like to kind of make up a little bit maybe for not having flawless Dawnbreaker, but it shouldn't replace flawless be like maybe get a 4% damage increase. Yeah. While having it slotted so you don't feel like you're wasting out as much. You know, like make it but you know, it can't be as good as Flawless Dawnbreaker or else it'll be the same thing we had before where everyone will just take it, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But there there needs to be like people who want to play werewolf should play werewolf because they want to. Same with vampire, not because it's they have to, or in the case of the werewolf where they didn't even get the negatives unless they were in werewolf form which I thought was dumb. Vampires got the negatives because they were vampire all the time. Uh, you didn't actually take the extra poison damage unless you were in werewolf form. So it really was a free 15% yeah, free stamina. Yeah. yeah. Free stamina without any negative to go with it. At least the vampires ha- who had the other uh, um, regenerations at least had to deal with fire. <laughs> um, and you know, and in the same line, like another personal thing vampires have never been enough to make me want to become a vampire either because you always have the the fire the fire issue because you're right. always a vampire and the only thing that really comes good out of it is bats yeah i almost feel like if they would have just made it so that the poison damage would have affected you even when not having it on your bar it would have been worth the trade-off like it, it would have had the same thing as vampire I don't know. It's funny because a lot of people thought that's how it was. <laughs> people yeah. would go. <laughs> I I used to go into dungeons with people and we'd get in the fungal grotto and they're like, "Hey, just so you know, I'm a werewolf and this might go bad." It's like, no, it's not going to go bad as long as you, you don't, don't turn into, into a werewolf. werewolf. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, this was to help with summoner or not summoner. Hello, sorcerer and the melee play style where they felt like sorcerer didn't have enough stamina morphs and things like that so they decided to add a little bit these skills expert mage and daedric protection are getting some changes expert mage now grants weapon damage on top of spell damage so that's pretty cool yeah that's uh, awesome. and daedric per- protection gives instead of just the health regeneration it gives an additional 10 percent stamina regeneration to try to really help out with the melee sort play style so that's really cool I'm a melee guy at heart, so anything that you know helps out melee, 
I'm 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 in favor of because I'm melee. I've been, I've been wanting to try a melee sorcerer really bad, so uh, I, I I like this. I know back in the day, dual wield with a sork with uh, what is that? Crit surge, went and yep. high crit was the way to go. Now now crit of course took a big turn down, so it's not so much anymore. But they used to be sick, absolutely back when, sick. Back, back when I didn't play the game. <laughs> yeah, back when you didn't play the game. Yeah. Um, Camel mounts might be coming. They kind of teased nice. about that. I don't know. Can we talk about? Can I ask a question? Do camels move fast? Uh, in desert areas, they can move pretty quick. They can move pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, in my mind, I just picture a slow camel walking across mm-hmm. the the desert, and I'm camels in my mind, I'm like, really move. They can. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, that that's what was in my mind when they said that. And also, I just want to say. Uh, this new this new guy we got in Zenimax, he says yes a lot. Yes. You notice that? <laughs> yes. Wow. He kept saying yes, and I kept looking. I kept turning my head like, whoa. Yes is, to what? This definitely isn't Paul Sage. Yeah, yeah, not. We'll think about it. Um, <laughs> this is something they're talking about. People abusing the slash stuck command. They are gonna change it so that it counts as a PVE death in Imperial City, so people can't use slash stuck. Because all it would do is port you to a way shrine. It's supposed to be a, a command to help you get out of when you're stuck in the world. And it charges you gold. But people are using it in PvE to port back um, with Telvar stones. So that will count as a PvE uh, death. And you will lose 10% using stuck or whatever it is. Um, that's a good change. <laughs> it's a good change, but one of my problems with this whole, this whole Telvar stone thing they have going right now is simply that if you kill a guy and he has 300 Telvar stones on him, all you got to do is run into a mob, of, uh, M- a mob of NPCs, let them kill you, go back to your Ebonheart Pact or wherever you are, and you've only lost 10% of those 300 crowns. And huh. it's kinda, it's, you, know, you know what I mean? And that's, you know that's a way I've, of game doing, system too. I see that. I've been doing I've been doing that all weekend. And <laughs> we just tell you, you know, I get a guy, I kill a guy, I get three hundred off him. I'm like, oh my goodness, I gotta find a mob. <laughs> Run into the mob, let them kill me. Get I'd back rather in, lose ten. Of, I could see people yeah. running and seeing a bunch of enemies coming and running to a bunch of mobs and letting the mobs kill you first so yep. you don't lose yep. them all. I'd that, rather that, lose ten percent than anything else. That's how it was. Wow. It wasn't just me doing it. You know, I saw a bunch of people doing it. You know, I saw a guy get a nice kill, and I helped him on that kill, and I got 200 off it, so I know he got 200. All of a sudden, he does that uh, toppling toppling charge into a big <laughs> group, and then he just stands there and mm. until he until they kill him. And Interesting. Yeah. I've, I've reported it. So I've, okay. I've looked, so, yeah. Um, talking about... I know they were talking about the different polymorphs that are available, such as like the Daedric and the Soul Shriven, which are, are like skins. They're essentially skins that you can wear. They're costumes, but they change your skin instead of your armor. And people were asking about, if we don't buy Imperial City, how are we going to be able to get them? Well, you won't be able to get them yourself because they, they give us a hint that these will be found in the treasure vaults that we have to unlock. But they will be tradable. So you'll be able to sell them. I imagine they'll go for a lot because they even said it's going to go for a lot of gold because of how rare they are. So this might be a market. So that's pretty cool, actually. Selling yeah. selling the polymorphs found in the treasure vaults. Hmm. Um, and I'm fine with that because then you yeah, still have to earn the gold. It's not like buying it with, <laughs> you know, uh, your credit card. Um. The next patch, Telvar stones are going down to only losing 80% when you died from PvP. They're testing that <laughs> next. Thank God. I, I think the 100% is going away because the way they're talking about, they're like, yeah, 100%, we tried it. People are not, like they were even saying, people aren't getting as many Telvar stones as we thought because people are, are not risking the, the, you know, of how it's going. So we're going to change it to 80% next patch and test that. So player would, kills will only get 80%, not a hundred. It will put people at ease a little bit. Cause I'm telling you right now, when I kill somebody and I get 300, 300 of those stones, my heart is pounding out of my chest. <laughs> you know, I, I crawl into a corner. <laughs> I try to get into stealth and I just think, man, I'm going to lose these all right now. I'm so in the garden district. No one see me. 
think yeah. invisible. Especially if you're like in the Garden District and you're an Ebonheart pack, because every single sewer that you go down to in that place takes you into their sewers. Oh. So you got to get through the whole sewers and find the Ebonheart pack. It's it is a mission. It is it's so fun, but it's such a mission. Oh my. Um, they did tease that they have a long-term goal, which is pretty exciting, to add veteran versions to every dungeon. Yay. Yeah. That. They have no timeline, but they did say that is a long-term goal. It's on their little whiteboards in, at Zenimax going, our plan is to add veteran versions to each dungeon. That's always cool. Um, another thing that, that I liked and I thought was really cool, they're adding in buffs and debuff tracking, as well as various other UI things such as nameplates, maybe different customizable UI stuff. That excites me because I use add-ons just for buff and debuff tracking just because I need to know when my rally's up and I need to know when my uh, dots wear off. <laughs> it's going to be great for console players. Oh Yeah, it will be great for console players. Great for PC players then too because it'll be native. Yeah. Oh, um, I know. It's just a matter that they don't have much, really have add-ons. So it's gonna... Yeah. Oh, yeah. And keeping track, unless you're counting in your head for certain abilities, you know, like uh, if you're keeping rally, that's 30 seconds. But other ones are shorter. It'd be nice to know when you have to refresh them. Uh, such as even like the critical strike buff I get from doing biting jabs only last eight seconds. So unless I'm counting in my head, there's no way to know. So I'm, I'm excited to see that. Um, now we're going to talk about racials a little bit, and this is exciting. They're changing the Nord racial there. It's going from 3% max health to nine. I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. They wanted Nords to be more tanky, so 9% additional health is awesome. And I'll say this, because even though I play a, D, or a, a DPS, that just means I can actually remove more points from health. I don't need to put as oh. many in there to hit the 20,000, and the rest can go into stamina, which increases my damage. So that's awesome. I like that a lot. Um Argonians also got a change. Their max health went from 3% to 6%. And the healing taken went from 6% to 9%. So they're kind of keeping with, they're not making any massive sweeping changes. They're just buffing. Um, but they did revert all the Altmer and Bosmer changes. So Thank God. What was that about? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's what people buff, are saying. Let's buff two of the strongest class, two of the strongest races in the game. I'm yeah, sure. that's what a lot of people were complaining. People who didn't play Altmer and Bosmer were like, why the heck are you buffing them? They're already like the primo race for almost every class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, master stamina class, master magic class. Oh, let's buff them both. Let's buff them both. <laughs> Make them even better than all the other cla races that no one cares about. Um, this one's kind of disappointing they talked about, but they have no plans to add underwater content for Elder Scrolls. Um, now, when they say when they say this, I really hope they mean no underwater content and not no underwater exploration. See, the way they explained it is, no, there will probably be no underwater exploration. Now, uh, Eric Robel was talking a little bit about he likes the idea of being able to like go down into a cave or something that's underwater, but there's a lot of stuff they didn't build the game around fighting in the 3D space in terms of. Um, water combat and stuff like that so yeah, i don't know they were kind of like we have no plans for it at all because of the way we built the game they're like it's not necessarily off the table that we wouldn't have small underwater stuff in the future such as going into a little cave to find a like a chest or something but there wouldn't be any combat there wouldn't be anything like that so the way they were talking is they're like it's not off the table that we do something like that we would never do a underwater like expansion or something um, but you know, we, it was just something that they're like, we're not saying we absolutely won't add it in some form, but as of right now, we have no plans because of the way we built the game. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, underwater combat is iffy at best, but I do like the idea of seeing a shipwreck or something and swimming, like holding your breath and going, okay, I got 30 seconds to explore what I can before I have to come back up for air unless you're an Argonian. You know, just something that was cool. Yeah, that's what I want. I don't really care too much about combat and having underwater quests and stuff. I just want to be able to go underwater, find a special master's chest that 
was right under our noses the whole time and unlock it, get some loot. <laughs> Sitting there and go, oh, crap, I have to hurry up and unlock this. I only have, like, ten more seconds of air. <laughs> like, imagine imagine if they put a chest, like, right on like right on the line where the slaughterfish started eating you. So you oh, had yeah. to be, like, perfectly set. So, you, uh, you know what I mean? So the, the slaughterfish don't catch you while you're opening the chest. Little things like that they can do to make... And then that chest gives you better loot because it's like a master chest or something. Right. Like I, Skyrim. I agree. No, I, I like that. It happened in Skyrim a few times too where you would swim down into a ship to get stuff or in Dwemer ruins that were flooded. You could swim down and yeah. find chests and things like that. Never really combat, but you could still swim down and find things. Um, they're going to try to support hybrid playstyles a little bit more in the future in terms of gear sets. They've already uh, releasing the prismatic um, enchants, which do all three stats. Um, but they're also going to look at ways of, of adding in in item sets that favor that as well. So people want to use both stamina and magicka. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Um. I'm curious how they're going to do that because hybrid styles never pull as much damage as, as the pure caster, pure healer, pure, you know, stamina DPS kind of deal. I don't know how much use they'll actually get other than people's personal play styles, like if they're questing and stuff, but I'm interested. To yeah, see. I think that's mostly what it's pointed out towards. I can't ever imagine myself yeah. making a magic of stamina build and I can't thinking, see oh, it. it's gonna, thinking, oh, it's going to work and be compared to... Other people's builds, no. Right. It, I don't think it'll ever get to the point where hybrid playstyles ever work in any type of competitive or at least even hard content. You know, like, what's the point of bringing a, a hybrid Magicka and Stamina DPS when both of those perform better when they're just solely that? Exactly. Even if it's only a couple percent better, it's still better, and therefore your raid group's going to go, yeah, we want this. Um, new map coming out for Imperial City. Apparently, they haven't showed us everything. They plan on expanding the sewers even more, so that's kind of exciting. Yeah, the map the map's pretty dull and pretty plain. Even when I got into the game and I looked at the map, I kind of went, oh, this isn't really a map. It's just kind of like looking at it from a bird's eye view. But yeah, so yeah, a nice new map would definitely be a good addition. Mm -hmm. um, with the changes coming to Emperor, with the passes being gone and stuff, someone asked a question about the Emperor costume. And they did say that they may allow the Emperor costume to be wearable anywhere, not just when you're an Emperor and in Cyrodiil. So that's kind of cool. Just because I love the Emperor costume. It looks awesome. Um, the next one I'm kind of both yay and nay about, and it's about champion points. And the reason why is they want to add a catch-up mechanic, which I'm in favor of, for people to catch up um, to people with lots of champion points. So, like, when they determine that the first 100 champion points go really quick and then the next ones don't, that's great. But the other thing they're thinking about is they're thinking about capping the amount of champion points you can earn in a season. So they'll determine, like, with this patch, you can only earn up to 500 champion points. And no matter what you do, once you hit 500, if it's six months to the next patch or three months or whatever, you're, you're SOL. I'm not sure I like the idea of capping. I like the idea of giving people catch-ups, but you really shouldn't punish the people who want to play the game. That reminds me a lot of um, Skyforge. Uh, Skyforge has a limit. They cap your progress every week. That You can only progress your character so far, and it's to keep people from getting too far ahead. So no matter if you you play you have time to play 50 hours a week, you can only technically get 10 hours of progression out of a week. I think that's dumb. I think that's real dumb. Avi? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, my mind's a little baffled over this one. I'll tell you the truth right now. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel bad with the catch-up mechanic. They have the numbers. They should look at it and go, okay, we see that 50% or 60 75% of our populace has over 100 champion points. Let's make it that you gain the first 100 champion points 10 times faster. Great. 
because then you're there with the populace. There's always going to be the outliers of the people who have like tons, but you can't, those are more the exception than the rule. You look at the average, you look at the average amount, and that's where you do the boost. You go, okay, based on all of this, our average number is 300 champion points. Speed up those first 300 and then put them back to normal. Don't penalize the people who play your game a lot just so that, you know, catch-up mechanics are fine. I love yeah. catch-up mechanics. Great. Do not block people from earning stuff because they can play. A cap, adding a cap is a very bad idea in my opinion. I, I don't like that. I think that a smarter thing for them to do would be simply something on the line of, oh, you've already earned 100 champion points in this season. Well, now it takes double the time. I don't even like that. But, you know... Yeah, it's... it's. It, it, I don't like the... I, like you said, I don't like the idea of punishing players just because they have more time to play than me. I mean, right. if someone has more time to play than me and they're in PvP or wherever they are making their character the best and earning champion points, well, in my opinion, he deserves to have more champion points than I agree. Me. He has more time to play. Lucky him. If I wanted, if if that was bothering me, I should just go play Skyrim. Right. So, yeah. I don't. I don't mind catching me up. So there's not such a huge disparity between new and old players, but never cap players. This reminds me of when uh, they did the dungeon tokens in World of Warcraft, uh, where you could earn a cap. They capped you each week. As soon as I hit the cap, I never ran any more dungeons because I never felt like it. I. I it was. It was a. At the beginning of the week, my entire guild, hey, let's do the, the, the daily dungeon. All right, let's do it. The second we hit cap, <clears throat> no one wanted to volunteer to help anymore because it's like, well, I'll get nothing out of it because I'm, you know, the gear doesn't mean anything to me because I already have better gear from raiding. I only did it to get my cap of this. And then I essentially stopped playing for the rest of the week. And that's what people are going to do yeah. in this game if you cap champion points. They're just going to stop playing. See, it should be like you said. It, sh it should simply be if someone new comes into the game, he finally reaches VR1, his getting these first 200 or so champion mm -hmm. points is going to be fairly quicker than the person who already has 300 to earn Absolutely. one than him earning one. It should, be, it should be pointed to the beginners yep. and not to the people who are with 500 champion help, points and are still casuals, playing your game. Help the casuals and new players reach the average champion point. So they're at a fairly fair um, basis. There's yes. always going to be outliers. The people who are out there. I have all 3,600 already. Well, good for you. You're the only person, you know, but you can help the other players. And as the average moves, you know, three years in and they go, all right, almost the average now is, is 1,200 champion points. Well, then make it 1,200. First 1,200 go fast. You can yeah. move it. You can patch it in. Just move it, oh, patch it in, and it, it will keep on going and going and going. Yep. And the just game find can stay out alive they, like that. Um, the average amount of champion points for your player base and make that those first ones go faster. Don't punish people. That's stupid. Yeah, these, these people with the 300-plus champion points are the people playing your game. Yeah. The, the <laughs> worst part I mean? is you don't want people to stop playing, even, yeah. even and, if it's and just... And new people... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, new people that are coming into this game, they might only be here for a month. Yeah. So you're, you're talking about, oh, we're going to punish the people that are playing the game too much for the people that might only come and touch the game for a little bit. Right. And it's like, no, no, I, I don't like that. I don't no. like that. And, and, and when, you, when you make people take a break, if you will, by forcing them going, well, there's no reason for me to play any of my characters because I'm capped on champion points. I'll wait till the next patch. That could be a month or two away, right? So what do they do? They stop playing your game, which means they're doing what? Looking at other games? Playing a different game. Which yep. may mean, hey, the next patch comes out and goes, well, uh, you know, I could go back, but I'm having a lot of fun in this game, and they may never come back. You don't want to force people to stop playing your game. An MMO thrives off of the people playing it, and you, do you always want to have stuff for them to do. That way they keep coming back. Yeah. Spending money on your crappy crown store. <laughs> <laughs> but if much. people aren't playing your game, they're not spending money on the crown store. They're not subscribing to ESO+. Plus. You know, they're not helping you develop new content by testing your content because they're not playing your game. Oh, 
Okay. Oh. No, that, 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 that's good to say, you know, because in my opinion, the people with a lot of champion points are the people playing their game. And this game's not as popular as it should be, in my opinion. It's a great Agreed. game, and I think it should be way more popular. But for these people that are dedicated to the game, like you and me, and like the people that have 300 plus champion points, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't, don't, uh, don't put it on them just because the catch-up mechanic is... The catch-up is bad. Right. It's not their fault. It's not their fault they're playing the game the um, way you I'm sorry it. I enjoyed your game so much. I played it exactly. for 700 hours. Why don't you exactly. punish me and say I can't play anymore? Yes. I've bought every single thing in your darn crown store, okay? You want me bought, to keep playing. Bought things, I bought things I didn't even want just to support <laughs> you guys. I know, right? I've bought everything, and I've never wore the wedding dress. Not even once, yeah, but I bought exactly. it. You know, I've bought many, many a crown. That, like, if you look at my crown store, anything that was a permanent item, I bought. Like, I have everything. I've spent way too much money because I support the game and I want to support it. Exactly. But if you, you if you to. make me so I don't want, you know, I can't play the game and progress, I won't be playing your game. I'll be off playing something else, and I may not come back. I'm an MMO player. I I get hooked into my game, but if I can't play your game, I will move on. I will look for another MMO that let does not cap me and lets me play my game. Yep. All right. <laughs> Glass motifs. They will eventually be in the crown store, but when they come out, they won't be. They're holding off a little bit to let people try to earn them. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess if the prices are... See, the problem is, and I'm going to say this, they're making the glass motif even harder to get than the Dwemer. Yeah. Like, they're splitting it up into individual pieces, like axes, gloves, but it's not like just finding them. You have to find pieces of the individual chapters of the book. They, they, took, this, they took the whole idea behind the Sigic Ambrosia to a whole new level with this one. They did, but the yeah. Sigic Ambrosia was you took the pieces and made one book. This is you take eight pieces and make gloves. Yeah, no, exactly. Make... A whole new level. Yeah, it's the thing is, I'm kind of worried about that. Is are they making the glass? I don't mind MMO busy work. That's what MMOs are. But are they making it so difficult that the price in the crown store will look reasonable? Go fifty bucks in the crown store, or having to find all these pieces? That's what I think it is. Make it harder to find in games so people can go buy it in the crown store. Yeah, if if they weren't adding this to the crown store, by all means, this is great. You 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 stimulate the economy. People will be selling pages because they'll go. Oh, I got like twelve of these page threes of gloves. Who wants them? And you can sell them, you know. But eventually, if you make it too complicated in a game where you're just going to add it to the crown store, which is probably a good business move for you, because people will go forget this. I'll just throw down fifty bucks. But you know, I'm against that because I will buy your crown store stuff if it's cosmetic and you know. And is interesting, you know. It's target. It's targeting the single player Elder Scrolls fans, in my opinion, and the role players. You know, I don't know. It's it's still. I'm also an MMO player, and I want to be able to earn stuff in game. Will I buy this? No, I will go out and farm it. But it, it's still just a matter of what. I know it's going to sound stupid, but does do I feel special afterwards when everyone else has it first? Because they threw down 50 bucks. Not saying I couldn't throw down 50 bucks. I got the money to throw down. I just don't want to because I don't like this type of marketing. It's, you know, you're not doing anything. You're just making it so busy. It's like freaking Maple Story, okay? You're making <laughs> it so complicated to get anything in game that it's just easier to buy it in your store. And that's not cool. All right. Last thing that they mentioned that I thought was pretty cool is they still are working on the PC controller support, which I know, Avi, I think you were, you're were you excited about, controller support for PC. Oh, yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, they do not have an ETA on it because it is kind of buggy still. So. Eh, that's all right. The controller I like support's that. interesting, though, because it's it, it will literally change your whole UI. Like, if you have your controller plugged in, when as soon as you touch your controller or turn it on, it flips automatically. Or if you touch your mouse, it flips back. That's an awesome idea. I, yes, I really like you can you can still type in zone chat so easily. Play yep. on your controller, roll up to your keyboard, type something, pull your chair back, get right back in the game. There you go. I love I love it. I'll probably even do it. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll buy a PS4 controller, not an Xbox, because I refuse to buy Xbox stuff. Same here. Sorry. I think I was talking to a console player 
Uh, as I said, I'm not against consoles. I'm just against Xbox because they're shady, shady stuff, especially when they first launched our first launch going, oh, look at us, 900, not 900p or 920p, look at us, we're better <laughs> than Sony. Oh, we're going to do DRM, like you can't even sell your games back or trade your games or else it'll charge people. And then Sony goes, we're not doing that. And then they go, oh, well, then we won't either. <laughs> the only reason why they didn't is because they got such negative reviews that they had to backpedal or risk losing money, which they did because PS4 blew them out of the water. Yeah. But they, their shady sales, like when they first announced all their stuff, that's why I don't support Xbox. But anyway, um, except technically I do support Xbox because I buy Microsoft Windows. No, I'm, I, I'm a Microsoft fan. I'm just not too big on Xbox console. Yeah, th- their whole sh- that whole shadiness they did just yeah. really turned me off. All right, guys, that was the ESO Live Q&A. There were some other stuff in there, so I do recommend watching it. Um, <clears throat> those were the things that I thought were pretty important. There were some other things in there, but check them out. Uh, we're going to move into our tail section, and Avi, I know you got a lot to talk about with uh, yes. Imperial City. Yeah, so let's talk PTS. So uh, I got into PTS uh, the same day that it was released, and I made an Imperial Templar VR-14. I got to interrupt you. What's it like to be able to download it in one day? Let it me live nice. vicariously through you. <laughs> you know, you know I, I started the download, and I went to work, and then I was uh, on Twitter talking to uh, Kip and Ark, and, Ark, and uh, I was like, they were talking about, oh, yeah, well, we'll have it during the weekend. And my, I was like, yeah, me too. I got home and it was downloaded. And I went, what the heck? So Jumped on and started playing. I didn't think, I didn't right think it was going to work like that. It was yeah, done I, about four days later. Four days later? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, I, I, like, when, when this patch goes live, I know I'm not playing for, like, a week. See, I got nice, I, I got nice internet, but my laptop is just awful. <laughs> <laughs> Or my computer. I have a beast PC, but my internet's terrible. But my house is selling, so pretty soon I'll have good internet. So okay, you and right now you and me are sort of the opposite. With yeah, that. I have a really beast computer, but I'm limited by my bandwidth. So all right, well let's talk Telvar stones real fast. The most Telvar stones I've gotten in one kill was 600, and that gave me such anxiety. It wasn't even funny. And I didn't get to keep it. So pretty much we were in the arena. There's a new arena in there. And it's an open arena. So people from other factions can jump on in and, you know, interrupt your battle in the arena and make it their own battle. And you get a nice chat at the end. And I got something. I should have got the screenshot. I think it was called a bone shard. You collect 60 of them and you're able to go unlock one of the big chests that are all around the Imperial City. Anyways, so this guy jumps in while we're in the middle of clearing the arena, and I use toppling charge, a couple biting jabs, and he falls. And I get 600 crowns, very randomly. So I jump out, and I'm starting, like I said earlier, I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't have been doing this. I start looking for a mob. I'm like, I need a mob to kill me now. So I find a mob, I jump in, and then these damn sorcerers come in with their crystal shards blast me down take all 600 and break my heart uh the the telvar stones is making this game very fun and the close the close battle pvp is just so exciting it reminds me to my counter-strike days because before i played this game i only played counter-strike and counter-strike just like other gun games has a thing called deathmatch this is very much like deathmatch you die, you get started back in a safe zone where you can jump back down and you can go out and kill people or die again. And it's rinse and repeat. It's something it's something fun where if you only have 30 minutes before work, you could jump in your game and you can actually play the game, earn some rewards, and get out in that 30 minutes and feel accomplished. Because I, got into, I went to work yes, uh, a couple days ago and I got on for 30 minutes. I killed one guy who had 350 Telvar stones. I was right next to the arena entrance, which is attached to the Ebonheart Pact, and I ran right up in. And yes, I am playing Ebonheart Pact for the PTS. I did it for the Wings of Fate Guild, even though none of you guys are getting on to play with me. <laughs> say, 
say that right now. I've been playing on my damn self this whole time. Wow. <laughs> Freezing? No, I, I, I've been, I've been pulling. Oh, well, unless no one has it downloaded yet, then I take that back. But no, I just I'm just saying because the way oh, you said phrasing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that too. Uh, but yeah, myself. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, playing by myself. No, but you know, I'm, I'm getting together groups. Or the Imperial City works very much where every time I get in, a bunch of people run around me and they start jumping. And I'm, I'm guessing that just means, hey, follow me. Because they don't write to you, they don't send you a group invite, so they just start jumping. So I start following them, and all of a sudden we're running through the sewers, killing all the bosses. And the sewer bosses are amazing. I mean, there's I wish I had I wish I had his name on me, but there's these guys that walk around with these two flags on their back, and they're like the the elite force of the of Molag Ball, and they are the most deadly thing I've ever seen. I was in a group of five. And we could not kill this guy for the life of us. We couldn't take him down a quarter health for the life of us. He drops one AoE, three of us die. I mean, it was insane. It was such a battle where we all had to go up and we had to make a group of about... I think we had like maybe a group of eight people with another like six people following us. And and we finally, we finally took him down. You get a whole achievement for it and everything. But crazy battles... And besides, besides all that, pretty much, uh, I just wanted to say that I'm getting a lot of the crashes that are very popular in the in the in the Imperial City right now. They told you, they told us a fix. I'm not sure the exact fix. Go figure it. Go search it out. It's on uh, ESO Live. You just have to change a number and a, and a little notepad. And yeah, it's it, um. It, actually, I can pull it up here right now while we're talking perfect. about it. Let me yeah, just perfect. Because it works. It worked for me. My game still crashes, but hardly, hardly anymore. Only in certain districts. Right. It is, and I'm trying to find it. It's under your user settings.txt. It's just normally under your Elder Scrolls doc. Um, ah, there it is. Um, here it is. It's set player stand-ins enable dot two. Um, mine's yeah. currently set to one. They said if you change that to zero, it could help. So player stand ins enable dot two, change the number in the parentheses to zero. It's in the user settings dot text, which is often found in my computer on Windows seven. Uh, it's under my documents, Elder Scrolls Online, and then PTS folder, and you'll see the add-on folder in there. So that's what you got to do. Yeah, and it works. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was getting, I was getting uh, the crash error bug in certain districts, the same districts every time which was like the Memorial District and other places. The only two districts, that, that word, saying that word too many times, twist your tongue. <laughs> uh, but the only two districts that I was able to actually get in are the arena and the Elven Garden because they're, they're a lot smaller. They're uh -huh. a lot more closed in, not a lot of, just not a lot of, not a lot of stuff. So your game doesn't crash as easy. So just recommendation to anybody who has a, a bummier computer like me, the Arena District and the Elven Garden District run very well. Careful in the Elven Garden District, though, because that is Dominion turf. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh. Dominions! I mean, I, and I, one more thing. One more thing to say. Why are you able to whisper enemies in different factions? It it it's so annoying. I kill a guy, and this has happened to me three times this this weekend. And I get a whisper, and it's just a guy going off on me. Duel me. Challenge me right now. You can't beat me again. I'm like, dude, this is Counter Strike all over again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, no. It, it may. I. I did not like that. I mean, there was one point where this guy just kept messaging me, and I had to block him. And it was like my mind was so out of the game. Now it's like, all right, I gotta, I gotta walk away for a bit. So, that, yeah. that that's really surprising that they even allow that. Like, I really it, am surprised. Yeah, I, I I kill a guy and all of a sudden I get a message saying Templar noob. Only noobs use Templar. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the four classes in the game, and you know, I'm not even gonna try to defend myself with these people, you know. So I don't even respond, and right. I don't know. It, it was fun. It was fun. That was the only. That was only the really frustrating thing to me is that people could whisper you. So if you get a nice kill and the guy has ten thousand, ten thousand uh stones on him, he might he might come say something to you a little bit. <laughs> 
you know so that's it, that's really uncool i don't no, like that I, at all no i i don't like that either it definitely reminded me of counter-strike you know you get in a fight in counter-strike and all of a sudden the guy starts writing in the chat saying all right then meet me down at base a and see if you can shoot me again with that gun like uh no i got i killed you <laughs> once dude i'm not trying to focus the whole day around it right uh, it, i don't so know that's pretty, but, uh, not anything against pvpers but the bad PvPers really make new people and people who don't really aren't really interested in PvP really not interested in PvP. Not everyone's like that. Some people really do like the fight. I'm not calling out everybody, but it's those people like that who take the people who are on the fence about PvP and make them not want to do it at all. That's that's what it is. Um, you know, and I, I I'm generally like. Yeah. As I say, you can't even hurt my feelings. I don't even care what you say to me. But there are other people who don't have my same mentality who would get trash talked um, by somebody and then never want to go in again because they're so upset about it. You know? See, well, see, I'm not, I'm not that bad. But I, I, I'm a good example of that. You know, if I'm playing a game and someone sends me a message and is talking bad mouth to me, it, it takes me away from the game. It takes me, it makes me want to get into an argument with this guy and it's, it's just so bad for the game it's so negative right. it's like I'm, I'm, I'm a single player Elder Scrolls fan I'm just trying to play this game and have fun and a lot of other people are playing this game with a complete different perspective as I'm playing an MMO and I'm trying to progress you right. know and so that 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 was something that well, you was, have that, that you really also fun. have that background though you played Counter-Strike you're used to it right yeah oh yeah there are uh, people like the single player elder scrolls fans who just want to get into this and if they get trash talked to they'll be not only does it turn people away from pvp but it turns them away from eso especially if they're not used to that and i mean come on guys don't be dicks let's just especially let's especially if you true. come from a single player elder scrolls game if you right. come from a single player Elder Scrolls game, then somebody messes up your immersion, which immersion is the number one thing in Elder Scrolls. I mean, right. I play I play this game because of the name. You know, not right. anymore. Now I play it because the game is amazing. But if this but the, game never the world had the takes Elder you in more in it, than anything, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like I play if other the, MMOs as well, but it's something about the world here that keeps me coming back because I love this game and its universe. Right. I, I mean, I remember I, I got into Skyrim and I ruined that whole game for myself because every single time something happened, I was on Google typing, <laughs> trying to learn the lore of this, this <laughs> giant world going, I'm so baffled right now. Join the Stormcloaks. Who are they? They have a whole <laughs> history behind them and they go, their family goes back to the second era. It's like, oh my goodness, you're, you're learning so much more. So this, this game is definitely more Elder Scrolls to me than MMO. So. Mm-hmm. That that little thing frustrated me. It took me back to my Counter Strike days, and right, uh, those are days I don't want to go back to. So. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't want to give that bat. Next thing you know, Elder Scrolls Online PvP will be considered with like League of Legends, and we don't want that. Yeah, like exactly. I'll even say this: my wife's over there, they east, and uh, she tried playing League of Legends, and one of the things that turned her off from it was she was she's she's a good player, but she. Honestly, if you don't, she's not a real, she, she plays a healer. She's soft hearted. Okay. I'm going to say it right now. She might beat me, but she is, she's soft hearted and she's trying to play a game and somebody starts yelling at her because she doesn't know how to play a lane properly. Well, it's her first time. She got so turned off and so stressed by it. She hasn't played again. See, there you go right there. That's awful. Bad communities. Yeah, I mean, she might have got into PvP eventually, but the fact that some someone on her own team who should have taken the time to help a new player starts cursing them out because they don't know the proper meta, and and it just turned you off so much and became such a stressful thing that people don't want to play. That's a problem. Same thing with what we were talking about earlier with the capping of champion points, forcing people not to play your game, whether it's by uh, some stupid mechanic that blocks progression or an unwelcome community, which we already talked about how we are so happy with the community in this game. That's what this whole episode has been dedicated to, to our community to say how great the community is to have the people who push other people away. You're only hurting yourself because if no one wants to play, then the part of the game that you love is going to become dead. 
Yes. <sighs> Rant. I feel no. like uh, Rage, I need to borrow your Rage of the Week bumper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to rent it from Elder Scrolls off the record. Be like, can yeah, I rent that? Can, can I borrow can, that for, can a, I borrow just, that? Just for an episode? <laughs> Get me, get me talking about limiting my content and you know capping me and and then let me borrow that. So, so yeah. No, I I don't know. I just that gets me upset. Like, yeah, uh, me things. too. Me There's too. a whole reason why in Warcraft they they didn't let you talk originally with other faction. They wanted PvP to be just that. They wanted it to be fun. You go in, you get killed. Oh well, who cares? You can't be trash talked to because you just got killed. Go back in. The second they allow you to trash talk and stuff like that, then it becomes a ganker paradise. And it, it's just not cool. And and what confuses me is, like, you can't walk up to an enemy NPC, or not NPC, an enemy player, and see that little circle. I mean, you might be able to, but I don't think so. See that circle that pops up where it's like, add a friend, invite the group. If they're part of a different faction, that doesn't pop up. And it's like, how is he getting my name and being able to whisper me? I'm like, what? I don't know. No, it's I, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be in the game. Simple as that. It shouldn't be in the game. It honestly, I, like, I like the way that Dark Age of Camelot did it, where they hid your name. Like if you were a, yeah. it showed your rank. So what it would what it would show is like if you're, it would just say Ebonheart Pact, whatever Tyro or Sergeant or what whatever your title was. That's all you saw. You never saw a player name. You just saw their PvP rank and what faction they were. That's how I it like that. Be. It should be an option. I mean, there's certain people who don't mind this, you know? There's certain people who are going to get into an argument with somebody. They're going to yeah, write but... to them, and they're going to go, all right, then, meet me on the stairs. Let's one-on-one, and I'm going to make you cry. I feel but... like that shouldn't even be a possibility because the few people who do that, you know, what happens if someone forgets or don't know what it is in turn? Of... It's just not worth it. It's yeah. just not worth it. Yeah. No, I, you're right. It, it, does, it poisons the community. Oh, uh, they just came over and said uh, Final Fantasy XIV does the same thing. They don't show your character name. They don't want people to to grief in that way, to look someone up. Because I've had that happen to me before where people looked you up or found a way of looking you up and then would go to external websites, find your character and wow, and make characters on your server to taunt you. <laughs> That's this. Like, okay, why are you, are you even playing a game anymore? Yeah, <laughs> you're spending half the time you're, you're spending half the time looking up people and figuring things out. You you play uh. these games so that you can uh, escape and and relax, not to feel more stressed. Unless you like it, like I like being stressed with raiding, but that's something I put myself through. I don't feel like being trolled to death in PvP. You know, I get a lucky shot on somebody. Great, live with it. You got owned this time. Doesn't mean you will next time. Um, you know, your your EP can maintain and, and withstand one death. Okay? Just get over it. <sighs> anyway, I've <laughs> totally went over your entire thing again. Keep going. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. That, that all needed to be said. Uh, anyways, back to my gameplay just to finish it up. Um... But one of the last things I did, I don't know if this goes against PTS. That wasn't really testing. I'm sorry. I got a VR. I got my hands on a VR 14 character, and I was excited to use it. So me, me, and a couple of my old my old ESO friends decided to go dueling. So we went up into Cyrodiil. We found a nice big open place, and we all just started having one-on-one duels, which I've never done before. And I actually went two out of four. I won two. I lost two. I beat a couple night blades and I got whooped on by sorcerers. I don't know what it is about PvP for me, but over this last week I have learned that sorcerers sorcerers will kill me and dragon knights I can't kill. Night blades are a good battle for my templar. But yeah, and if I fight if I'm fighting a templar, that fight's just going to go on forever. That's something I learned too. Oh my goodness, especially when we all have access to vigor and we all have access to engine, the Engine Guardian uh, Undaunted set. And it's like, oh my goodness. PTS is fun because it's just a bunch of people running around with the Engine Guardian set. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I did notice that this time they gave everyone the gear. Like, the Undaunted gear. Yeah, all of them. Most of them, yeah. That's all of awesome. Them. I, and it always had the best stat on it, too. It's like, wow, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I got I got in a big one on one with a Templar, and we kept on going at it. We had the exact same bar: biting jabs, the toppling charge, uh, the radiant oppression, and like rally and wrecking blow on our two hander. It was something like something along that line, <laughs> and we were going for forty minutes. And Dang. we were in the middle. We were in the middle of the arena district. I mean, uh, it was. We just got lucky. Nobody interfered with us, and we went for forty minutes before finally two more Ebonheart guys came and helped me out. You know, and that even that guy whispered me. But that was a better whisper. That was a man. What a battle! I wanted to see who would have won if they didn't jump in. Right. So, so uh, the whispering thing could be cool too. I sometimes, you know, it's just. I don't know. I have mixed, mixed emotions the, about I'm it. I'm of the notion that it's just easier to remove the possibility of trolling yeah. than it is to... Yeah, you may get one or two awesome people who whisper, you go, that was a great fight, good job. Problem is, is it worth the 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 harassment that could come when people are trying to play a game? Eh. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. But yeah, that, that pretty, that's pretty much been my week. It's all PTS and no progression. All of my characters are sadly still sitting at the exact same levels. And hopefully I can get myself to play them. But God, I just want a VR 14 character so bad. I know you and I were planning on doing uh, leveling characters because I bought those scrolls. And I just, we never I, had, I, got on. I still, I still, my, my Dragon Knight is still level 30. She hasn't leveled. But, you know, like I've said, I've been so stuck on this PTS I even had people uh, bring this up while we're on the show. People talking about the Daggerfall Covenant events for the Wings of Fate Guild. Those are still coming. I'm planning them. Uh, it's going to have a nice Craglorn Night 2 kind of the thing that AD and EP are doing. So we have it for everybody. I'm getting it all planned. It's just the PTS has completely taken over my week. <laughs> understandable. Understandable. I, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I, I, wanted, I wanted to test and... Uh, finally be able to talk about it on the show instead of going i don't understand pvp <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm trying to figure it out right right okay all right um wow well this week my gameplay has been sort of stunted in a way because uh, i haven't really got a lot of time but i did level uh my dragon knight got to 31 nice. uh from 29 so she gained two levels um, just she's questing in that area that I hate oh so much, which is uh, Shadowfen. Like, mm-hmm. I just I don't like it. <laughs> I'm there uh, with you. My, yeah. my level 30s and Shadowfen, too. And I just I, I just want to go to Cyrodiil and pop a potion or one of those XP potions and just grind mobs until she's VR one. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Uh, cause I don't want to quest in there again. Um, you, you heard Kip, Kip was out, uh, doing uh four man dungeons with just two people. And he said he was getting amazing experience from it. I have to talk to him about that. Yeah. I'd really like to, I just need to, I need to do something to get these he characters mess- up. He messaged me and I was getting ready to message you going, all right. So I think we both have dragon knights, right? You have a dragon. Yeah. Knight? Yeah. Yeah. The next like, one I'm leveling is a dragon knight. So like, hey, maybe we should throw in our double dick Dragonites and run those dungeons. We could do that. We could. I think we'd survive. I'm willing to respect my character into whatever I need to to live. I'm cool with yeah, that. Yeah, me too. I got a I got a Dunmer DK, so <laughs> Oh mine's a Kashyyyk, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, we'll 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 figure that out. Yeah, I have to Definitely. do that. Um so I did her for a little bit and that was about it. Uh the other thing the other stuff I did was all um this week was we had an awesome t- night last week for pledge night, which happened to be uh, on last week. Well, you'll be listening to it be a week ago was pledge night. Uh, I healed on my sorcerer, uh, healed both dire frost keep for the normal. And we actually got into a race uh, for vet way rest. Uh, Avi, you were there, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Were you not there? I could have swore you no. were there. Who was, who was it that was there? It was Kipster, Kilted, myself. Ark. Ark. Uh, Maiden was there. We we had two full teams. Um, Cheese, I think, was there. Uh, oh, there were a couple people, and I really feel bad now. I can't remember everybody. We had two full teams, and we got to the point where uh, I remember my team was a... I was a VR1 healer. Ark was a VR14 tank. And then we had a VR5 and a VR2. 
I think. And the other team had a VR12, a VR10, VR6, and a VR3. Um, and we, we, well, we both started, we decided we were going to race on this, and we, had, we, we up-leveled it. Uh, they up-leveled theirs to VR6, we up ours to VR5. I really wanted to do it to 12. I thought I could handle it on 12. And Kipster, <laughs> or not Kipster, but Arkaneer was ready to do it on 12 too. And I, I really think I could have done it up until that final, not the final boss, the, the, the Lich boss might have been a yeah. little tough. Um, but we had a lot of fun. We stayed in the same team speak chat so we could like taunt each other. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. We raced to the end. Uh, we did win. Um, but nice. I think uh, it was very, very close. I think if uh, if uh, we'd have wiped on the final boss like it was looking like we were going to, if it wasn't for like Ark massively popping his cooldowns uh, and rezzing us. I was, I I was going to say, you guys have one of the best tanks. So. Yeah, Ark was awesome and, and, and pulled that out. I think we would have lost. But it was it was a very close, close race, and it was a lot of fun for both of us. Uh, Next time, though, I said to Ark, I don't even care. I'll, I'll heal VR12 at VR1. I'm fine with this. So <laughs> um, we, we, we were going to go V12, but the other DPS in our, in our group were like, no, no. We, just wanna, <laughs> we wanna finish this tonight. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we can do it. <laughs> um, but that was a lot of fun. I, I just, it was a lot of fun because I was healing. And I'm calling out stuff as we're doing it. Like I'm, I'm calling during the thing. Kill, kill the ads. Kill ads. Kill ads. Stack on me. Stack on me. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> Brings back my good old raiding days. Even though it was a four-man dungeon, it was, it was, it was fairly difficult. Seeing as, you know, it was, it was scaled up to V5. I was only healing as a V1. Um, so it was more difficult than if it was V1 with a VR14 tank or whatever the case may be. But we, we did scale it up. Uh, and I, I'd really like to do it on 12. I, I really, I really would. I like, I, I really want to test my healing, but we did that. Um, we had Craglord night and Avi, you were there for that, weren't you? I was there for that one. Yes. Yeah. We had, we had a small turnout for this week. Cause I know Kipster and someone else, uh, Siri, I think they were trying to level their characters, but it was me, you, uh, Crab, Crabby and Kilted Piper. Crabby and Kilted Piper. I think Maiden showed up later, didn't she? Or maybe she didn't. I can't uh, remember. I think it stayed four people. Was it four? Yeah. Because I know Kilted showed up for the last half, the last ha- hour. And um, me, you, me, you, and Crabby were just kind of three man and things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, we had a we had a small turnout this week for Craglorn Night, but it was still fun. Uh, we cleared a bunch of delves because we took uh, that as an advantage of since we only had one group, we could do delves. So we were doing delves um, and cleared a bunch of delves in Craglorn. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm about halfway to VR2 on my Sork now. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, yeah, that's that's always fun. Really haven't touched my main much at all because I'm still waiting for the little milk drinker to give Thais and I a little bit more time so we can go back to questing and... and in uh um oh, bankori we're we're about halfway done with bankori and the rest of silver but at this rate i'm almost to the point of maybe we should just wait until imperial city so i gain experience towards vr 16 um, yeah and she'll she'll gain her veteran ranks faster too. yeah we might just wait i don't know we'll think about it but um that was pretty much our week in game so um yeah um this week i hope to have a few more things to say because i know that arc kipster myself and one other are going to be starting a vet dsa group so that's going to be kind of exciting um i know crabby is attempting to get a uh Ebonheart Pack Trials group ready, so if anyone's interested in that, I mean, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, all right, let's go ahead and go right into our guild corner, which is perfect because I should have just kept talking. Uh, first up, let's talk, or Avi, go ahead and give your shout out for your guild. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mortal Entity is a PVE guild for the Daggerfall Covenant. Looking for members just interested in playing the game, they have a 
they're able to get into all the Daggerfall coming in, Wings of Fate guilds. I always post there on the little the little message board. So uh, if you want to join, just message me in game at Avi Optimal, or you can find us at mortalentity.gamerlaunch.com. Excellent. Um, obviously Wings of Fate is the community guild for uh, the Dungeon Crawler Network in the Elder Scrolls Online. If you would like an invite, you can message me, send me an in-game mail at Agelos, A-G-G-E-L-O-S. We do weekly events, uh, mostly for Ebonheart Pact and Aldmari Dominion right now, but as uh, Avi said, Daggerfall Covenant will be coming shortly. Um, so we will have events for everyone. We try to do them weekly. Uh, well, we do have things weekly, and I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, but you can actually message anybody in the guild. Everyone has invite rights. So if you know anyone in the guild, send them a message. They can invite you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on this week in Wings of Fate. Uh, tomorrow, um, so the day you're listening to this probably, because it'll go live tomorrow, uh, August 4th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern is Ebon Heart Pact Pledge Night. Uh, so get your silver and gold keys uh, in Evanheart Pack. They're going to speed run all regular pledges for silver keys and lobby players, so you can get your skill points. So feel free to show up. We'll create as many groups as necessary. And then any veteran ranked uh, character will do the gold pledges. Uh, that is being run by Kilted Piper. That's uh, K-I-L-T-E-D-P-I-P-E-R. Try to be in Deshaun. Uh, in Mournhold, the meeting area around 725 so we can get our groups together. Uh, we encourage you to hop into TeamSpeak, obviously, even if you can't chat, uh, just because then you can listen to the groups. Uh, next up is the Ebonheart Pact Craglorn event, which is August 6th at 7 p.m. Eastern, in, so meet up in Belkarth. Uh, I am the host for that. We'll be running around completing quests, collecting sky shards, downing world bosses, clearing delves. Uh, you have to be at least veteran rank one. Come out and join the fun. Um, we'll create as many groups as we can and run around. Uh, we'll probably just create individual groups and then just everyone follow me. So hop in TeamSpeak and have some fun. Um, when is next week? Friday. So, uh, uh, I won't mention those two, but check out the calendar. We have the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast. Um as well as uh, the new Chocobo Knights as well this week, uh, but they do not relate to this. Um, of course, next week, August 9th, is our next Tales of Tamriel, episode 76, so come on out. This won't, That won't be a live show. Uh, I will mention that um, Aldmari Dominion Pledge Night is August 9th at 6 p.m. Eastern. So hop on out there. That uh, Aldmari Dominion Pledge Night is every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So if you're Aldmari Dominion in in the guild, come on out. Clan of Orofin, that's C-L-A-N-O-F-O-R-O-P-H-I-N, runs those. Uh, meet in Belkarth about 15 minutes early. That helps us get groups together uh, and uh, show up and have some fun. All right, so that's uh, all the stuff for this week. Uh, we do have a guild raffle to do. Uh, we, we have a pot of 131,000, <clears> so the person will walk away at 30% of that, close to 40K. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to trustyrandom.org and generate a number here. And the winning number is 37. And that is Kipster. Congratulations, he last Kipster. Week. <laughs> he did win last week, but he has uh, been donating a lot. He actually took his uh, winnings and threw them back in. Woo! So awesome. he had, I got to start like, getting in this. He had like 40 tickets in. Albeit Ooh. I yet again did not win. And I had probably 70 tickets in <laughs> well, i'm gonna start putting i'm gonna start putting my tickets in now <laughs> um obviously i mean tickets are a thousand gold a piece they help us get guild raffles and they really help support the the guild right and worst case scenario there's a good chance that even with one ticket in you could still win right it's random um obviously the more tickets you buy the more chance you have but then again you you know, like you only get thirty percent of the pot, so Kipster will be walking away with almost forty thousand. But he put thirty-five back in, or forty from last week. So technically, I don't think he won anything, even though he rolled it back in to help the guild. Um, gambling, man. <laughs> it is. It's gambling. You could throw one ticket in and walk away with forty thousand. You know, like if it gets up this high, like you could. Um, but obviously, the more tickets you put in, the higher chance you have of winning. Um, 
and you know we go from there all this all the money other than the 30 percent that goes back to the winner goes into the guild bank to allow us to make bids on traders so that we can earn more money so that it's all to help fund the guild so um definitely participate congratulations kipster again this week uh good luck sir thank you so much for participating and help us out with this raffle man we really do appreciate it um so there we go all right um well we don't need to go over emails and stuff because we did that at the beginning of the show so let's go ahead and wrap up this show and avi go ahead and let everyone know what your final thoughts are and where they can find you all right well my final thoughts are the pts is amazing imperial city is just going to be great it's everything all the things i've been hearing pvp people complain about you're getting a lot of it here so it's really good. As where to find me, you can find me on Twitter mostly is where I'm active and in game uh, at, at Avi Optimal. That's at A V I O P T I M A L. And yeah. All right. Um, obviously, you can find me in game at Jealous A G G E L O S. You can find me on Twitter at A G G E L O S underscore W O F. Uh, that is my Twitter. Um, Obviously, you can find the show at Tales of Tamriel on Twitter and at Dungeon Crawl Net. Those are our two Twitter accounts. One is for you know the entire network, so pretty much everything gets re re <laughs> retweeted from there, no matter what show it is, as well as some other little things. So make sure you follow all of that. Um, my final thoughts for the show: Thank you so much for the amazing community. That's what this whole show was. The fact that you guys are fantastic. Uh, remember the if we get a hundred likes on this video, I will do a let's play of Ocarina of Time. Um, yeah, I cannot. I will try to keep it as family friendly as possible, and I will mark it if it's not so, because my commentary was a little more adult themed when I was playing Wind Waker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. They East thought it was funny, but it wouldn't be necessarily be something you should listen to with the kids. Uh, so I will try to calm that down if I do play. And I will obviously, if I feel anything is at all not appropriate for children, I will warn people in the message. I always do that. Uh, being a father now, I feel like, you know, hey, we're all adults, but I don't want your kids to hear bad things from me. You know, <laughs> if I say something, I'll warn you. The kids are probably going to hear it anyway, but I'd rather it not be from our network. So, um, so 100 likes will get me to play Ocarina of Time. I will figure out a way of streaming gameplay. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's what we'll do. So, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this. I was going to say short episode, but it's almost two hours. Avi, we've got problems. You just listened to another episode <laughs> uh, we love of talking Tales about of Tamriel. We, we do. We really do. I really thought this would be a short episode. Involved, I didn't say it this sure time, but it didn't turn out that way. Um, thank you guys for listening, and make sure you show up next Please week sure for our next episode. Thank you, everybody. Have a good YouTube night. Channels. We can be found on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network, on Twitter at Dungeon Crawl Net, and at Tales of Tamriel. And on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tales of Tamriel podcast. Thank you for listening, and we hope to see you next time.